Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's expert webinar titled Advanced Kubernetes Concepts and Tools. I am Abhishek from Spring People. We are India's largest enterprise training provider. I will be your moderator for today's session. In today's session, we have global certified Docker expert, Mr. Sayed Mudasir. He is a seasoned expert in delivering comprehensive training programs with a hands-on approach focusing on global certification standards. With a proficiency in various training and teaching methods, he excels in troubleshooting and problem solving. His training delivery spans both instructor-led and virtual-led modes. As a DevOps specialist, Sayed Mudasir possesses extensive knowledge in Docker, DCA, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, and more. He is adept at managing the entire lifecycle of DevOps projects, from developing microservices applications to containerizing them in Docker and orchestrating production workloads in Kubernetes. His expertise extends to application monitoring stacks like Prometheus, Grafana, Elasticsearch, Kibana, or to name a few. In today's webinar, Sayed Mudasir will let us know about advanced Kubernetes topics, Kubernetes network policies. To all the participants, you can mention your questions in the chat box and it will be answered at the end of the session. Without further ado, let's start today's session. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Sayed Mudasir to start the session. Over to you, Mr. Mudasir. Hey, thank you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, we just heard yeah, Abhishek introduced me regarding who am I and uh, the experience what i have extensive experience in devops projects and uh, the kubernetes i'm certified kubernetes administrator okay so i don't want to bore you people with my introduction so let's get started so regarding the kubernetes advanced topics so in today's webinar we are going to learn about the concepts so first how the kubernetes networking works and what are the things you need to know regarding that and so the technology what we are talking is the kubernetes is uh, maybe let me introduce what is this kubernetes kubernetes is an microservice which means the containerized application orchestrator which orchestrate your application and manage that application in dynamic way the kubernetes will help you to run your application maybe more uh, it provide you more scalability and then it uh, self heals your application it auto scales your application and if uh, the traffic arrives it has the capability of the load balancing as well so the main features with the kubernetes is so one is you will get scalability for your application and the second the important stuff is uh, auto scale your application and the third uh, the important thing is uh, regarding uh, the the self-healing property for your application so that is the way that's why the kubernetes is very very hot in the devops stream the kubernetes is a mature technology it was introduced by google and it is gifted to one of the uh, organization called cncf cloud native computing foundation where it is managed by a lot of engineers now they are managing this technology the very very dynamic technology in very very good way and in that today we are going to talk about some advanced concepts i think before um, in the last webinars we discussed about the concept of the kubernetes networking where uh, in the uh, maybe if you want to expose your application to external world in that scenario uh, maybe in kubernetes you want to create in an object called services so the service is, is something in an abstraction by using which you can expose your application to 
the external world and as well as internally to the cluster so what is this what are the different types of services we have so mainly uh, in kubernetes we have three types of services one is the cluster ip uh, the node port and then load balancer if you want maybe if you want to expose your application only internally to the cluster in that scenario you can go with a cluster ip i'm just revising so that rather than just jumping to the concept so i'm just revising what are the things maybe you need to know before these advanced topics just kind of a base so in kubernetes we mainly have three types of services one is cluster ip node port and the load balancer if you want to expose your application only internally to the cluster so that's where the cluster ip comes into picture if you want to expose your application to the external world external client in that scenario we can prefer to go with node port and the load balancer let's uh, maybe uh, if you have any internal applications like the database uh, other application the caching server in those scenarios we prefer to go with cluster ip and uh, for other applications we prefer to go with node port and load balancer so this is these are the services which will help you which will act like an internal load balancer which helps you based upon the rules based upon the port information what you have given based upon the labels they are going to help your application or help you people to route or to distribute your traffic in between the application and so the load balancer so is kind of a one to if you have maybe uh, one internet uh, facing application one front end in that scenario you can go with load balancer if you have 25 internet facing application in that scenario the load balancer service is not sufficient you prefer to go with some concepts some advanced concepts like ingress controller by using which you install you can install the ingress controller we have different ingress controllers like nginx the azure gateway uh, we have a lot of uh, maybe the controllers by using by installing them into your cluster you can distribute your uh, traffic based upon the rules what you have created in kubernetes we have a concept called ingress by using which you can create a rules based upon the roles the traffic will be distributed in 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 between with your application in between the applications yes so and then so the main problem uh in kubernetes is so you deploy your application as a pod and you know the pod is the smallest deployable unit in kubernetes cluster uh if you want to host your application pod is the smallest deployable unit what is this pod actually so pod is nothing but if you want an analogy in virtualization world the smallest deployable unit is virtual machine in docker world the smallest deployable unit is the container and in kubernetes world the smallest deployable unit is pod you can think of the pod uh, is nothing but where you actually host your application before where you actually host your container fine and then so the default behavior of the pod is by default they are they are allowed to communicate between each other so that's where the problems arrive so if we allow every pod in the cluster you may have uh, maybe hundreds of pods are running hundreds of application different different the databases uh, the application the uh, like different microservices the load generator the email the ad service the recommendations and then your card service okay so you may have a lot of microservices which are running as a pod in kubernetes cluster by default they can communicate they are allowed so to communicate with each other so they are open for the communication but we don't want this behavior so i want so some pods should communicate with some pods and i don't want uh, maybe some pods to communicate with my pods i need restrictions i want to add restrictions is that possible to achieve yes so that's where so today we are going to talk about the very hot topic in kubernetes that is how to work with how to restrict this communication uh, maybe between my application how to add restriction to whom uh, to which pod you need to talk so your application so your front end uh, to get uh, maybe the information from which pod which pod to allow which pod to deny so all those stuff is that possible to achieve in kubernetes as well 
yes so that's where so we are going to talk about one very advanced topic called we have a lot of uh, maybe the topics like in advance like we can talk ingress controller and uh, some the how to work with the kubernetes operator but in this webinar we are going to talk about the concept called the network policies how to work with the network policies so that's where so let me run through what is this network policies and how the network policies works so the net, the network policies are an application centric construct which allow you to specify how pod is allowed to communicate with various network with other applications with other pods you can restrict them so which pod to allow which name from which namespace so a namespace uh, in kubernetes is kind of a if you want to virtually segregate your kubernetes cluster so in that scenario the namespace comes into picture so if you want to talk a particular part from particular namespace so whether you want to allow whether you want to deny is that possible to control yes by network policies you can achieve from which ip block you want to allow from which IP block of the containers you want to allow. Is that possible to control that as well? Yes, that is also doable. And that's how by using network policies, by using th these three identifiers, these three entities, uh, you can restrict your maybe application, uh, maybe the traffic flow, whether it is egress, whether it is ingress, you can able to control both the type of uh, maybe the communications. Yes. So what do you uh, what you can do with the network policies? So by default, they are non isolated. They can communicate with all application which are running in your cluster. That's the default behavior of the Kubernetes. But nobody want that behavior. I want to control. I want to control the flow of the traffic. So the flow of the traffic which is happening in between the application. If somebody lands, it is the uh, maybe kind of a uh, the security. So you want to add security for your application. If somebody lands on any pod in the Kubernetes cluster, if he is capable of communicating with your maybe any front end application or any microservice which is handling the payment, he can get all the information. But we want to restrict that so we want to deny that behavior so that's where the network policy comes into picture by using which i can allow i can deny the ingress the egress or any type of traffic to my application i can control at the ip address level i can control the stuff at the port level i can control the things at the namespace level i can control by using the part labels so keep in mind so the network policy is applied to a particular namespace and only selected parts in the particular namespace fine so next the important thing is we are going to uh, maybe uh, see the live stuff so how the network policy works and you know i think you have very good idea about so so network policy is kind of a, just a fancy word and before that we had like access control list to whom you want to give access and you, to whom you want to deny in the it world so the the same stuff the fancy word we are using is just a network policy so why so what is the reason yes so what is maybe how to apply this network policy to my kubernetes cluster so if you want maybe you can control as we discussed at the pod selector so the policy type whether it is ingress or egress and if you want to control the ingress or egress what are the different things you can maybe you can give uh, maybe the ip address so from if the traffic is arriving from this ip address whether you want to deny whether you want to allow that is also doable if you want to allow a traffic from particular namespace so that is also doable you can control you can tell hey if the traffic is coming from this namespace please allow the traffic if the traffic is coming from this particular name place namespace please deny the traffic don't answer the question what he's asking you can achieve that as well and based upon the parts so Yes, you can tell in the network policies if the pod having this label, please don't talk with that pod. He's kind of an enemy. You can give uh, maybe the flavor like this and you can maybe make ensure your application is secure and his maybe behaving as maybe you want. 
okay so that's where the network policy is very very good solution to configure it depends on the overlay network as well so which overlay network you're using so we have like uh, the overlay networks like the flannel the calico the weavenet the cilium is very hot in the market the cilium is a very uh, good network so if you configure the cilium in your kubernetes cluster you can achieve a lot of stuff it is maybe uh, it is also one of the project from the cncf they are working behind that cilium the open source overlay network which enable the good network policies you can achieve a lot of stuff in the with the cilium as well and then so how to apply so mother say you are telling that the pod selector the you can control based upon the pod labels based upon the ip address based upon the the port information based upon the the namespaces how actually i need to so this is how you can tell your application so ingress and egress traffic so which is coming is called ingress which is going from your container which is going from your pod in that scenario that is called egress traffic and this is the yaml manifest an example for uh, the network policy might look like this so this is where you can tell your application so let me capture the pen so here you need to write an yaml as usual with the akms so a stand for the api version the k stands for kind and m stands for metadata and s stands for spec so you need to uh, write akms and then you need to tell i'm going to create one network policy fine and what is the name of the network policy for which type of application for the database or testing your application uh, to behave as per your rules so to which in which namespace your application are running to in which namespace you want to create this network policy the default to which type of parts here you don't have to tell the name of the parts here we are going to use the labels as you know in kubernetes the labels play a very very important role and here also we are using labels to achieve our to implement our network policies so that's where i am telling that hey i'm creating this network policy for the parts having a role it is just a key is equal to value they are telling that uh, the uh, we have some parts which are having a label role is equal to db so this is the network policy section what we are creating so the network policy and the name of the network policy in which namespace so in which namespace you want to create this network policy and to which parts the parts having a label role is equal to db and then so then what is the policy types so here you can tell so we have mainly two types policy one is ingress to the incoming and egress outgoing traffic so if it is ingress so what is the rules you want to imply so on what basis to whom i need to allow to whom i need to allow so here i am telling that the ingress so from the ip block ip block the cidr range is 172.17.0.0.16 if the traffic is coming from this ip address please allow ingress traffic should be allowed except don't allow the traffic having an ip address 172.17.1 dot zero slash 24 so except you can add except and uh, you can tell don't allow don't allow any traffic from the parts having a ip address 172.17.1.0.4 and you can tell the namespace selector as well one is ip address then i am telling that the namespace from which namespace you want to allow traffic so here as well we are not specifying the name of the namespace here we are telling that so the namespace having a label i have some namespaces i can have n number of namespaces in my kubernetes cluster but in those there has some namespace with the label project is equal to my project project is equal to my project and please allow the traffic coming from that label the namespace having a label project is equal to my project and then you can tell a uh, part selector 
to which parts the parts having a label role is equal to front end please allow the traffic from those applications as well the parts having a label role is equal to front end and you can tell the port information as well from this port please allow the traffic if the traffic coming from this port and the protocol the tcp the port is 6379 then please allow the traffic so this is here i am telling so in this one yaml itself i am covering all the stuff so one is at the ip range and the second stuff is on the basis of namespace and the third is to which part i want to allow the ingress traffic and from which port i need to allow the traffic to my application so to my application having a label role is equal to db to these parts these are the rules the ingress rules to be Im implemented to be applied and then i can tell the egress as well the egress is outgoing traffic to to whom you need to answer so the traffic which is coming from so the ip block 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and the port from which port so the traffic coming from 5978 please allow allow the egress type of a traffic so this is how you can tell what are the different or uh, maybe the ingress rules what are the different the egress rules all those things so this is the simple yaml so where i am just denying so default policy i am telling that i just want to deny the ingress the incoming traffic to my application having a label app is equal to web and i don't want any part should communicate with my application so in that scenario so that's where so i'm going to uh, create one network policy and tell so this is denying i don't want 100 percent i just want 100 percent isolation for the application having app is equal to web i don't want any traffic should allow to my application so in that scenario what you can do so you need to write one yaml and which namespace to which part you want to apply this traffic all those things so now let's learn in maybe hands-on with the hands-on how to create our own network policy and how to achieve that in our cluster so just give me a minute let me bring my uh, maybe the kubernetes uh, 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 the putty session so just a minute let me connect to my remote cluster so let me change the setting the appearance and change the setting so let me make our webinar a little colorful apply so i think so hey cube ctl get notes i'm checking oh, all notes are ready so this is so the kubernetes cluster so we, we where i have a i have three node cluster so one master and you know about the architecture i assume you people know about the kubernetes architecture and i have created three node cluster where one host is acting like master and remaining two host is acting like worker nodes and now so let me do one thing just a minute let me bring my yaml So, so the Kubernetes, Kubernetes.io. So in Kubernetes, we have a very, very good documentation. So if you want to learn any concept, you can refer easily the documentation as well. So for the practice and all those things. So let me search network policies. Yes. So if you want, so here also in the documentation, they're telling that what is this network policies? If you want to control the traffic flow at the IP address or at the port level for TCP, UDP and SCTP protocol, then you might to consider, consider a concept called the Kubernetes network policies for particular application in your cluster. Network policies are an application centric construct, which allow you to specify how pod is allowed to communicate with various network entities yes 
so this is the example what we saw the two sort of pod isolation one is at ingress another one is, uh, is egress level and this is the yaml what we have learned so i have added in the ppt so this is a very very good example where we are going to cover all sorts of maybe the policies you can apply at the ingress level as well as egress level so let me bring let me deploy one application and let me show you how the things works so let me deploy one application i had one yaml let me bring that yaml yes just okay so if you want to deny all the traffic how the things will look like i just want to uh, so if you maybe it's very if you want to deny all the traffic if you don't want to whitelist any traffic to your application you just want to black a block blacklist all the traffic to your application if you are maybe temporarily if you just want isolation for your application in those scenarios this this uh, the service will help you a lot so now let me deploy one application hey cube ctl run the name of the application is test test on i'm just giving a random name and hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx i'm just deploying one application and i just want one label for my application hyphen hyphen label is equal to app is equal to web so i'm just giving the key and value app is a key is equal to web is a label i just want to attach and if you want to expose your application in one single command you can add the expose option as well hyphen hyphen export and hyphen hyphen port information by default if you don't specify the type it's going to create the cluster ip service so uh got it it should be labels yes the service can you get to see here so the service is also created in one go and the pod is also created so if you want to run so kubectl run test one hyphen hyphen image the image i'm using is nginx and i'm telling that hyphen hyphen labels yes hyphen hyphen expose create the service and the port is i just want to use 80 fine so now so kubectl get pods yeah the test pod is running happily so now by default as you know the pod will communicate with each other the default behavior is we don't have any control if you deployed any application other pods can able to talk with this part so let me confirm that as well okay so now what i will do let me deploy one temporary part hey cube ctl i just want to run if you add hyphen hyphen rm option you can call that part as temporary i just want cube ctl run deploy one new application and hyphen hyphen rm so once you deployed after testing the communication whether you can communicate with the remote application or not once you tested if you add hyphen hyphen rm option when you exit from this part it automatically delete that part that is the use of hyphen hyphen rm you don't have to manually go and search and delete it so it will kind of maybe some automation so to my job so hyphen it interactive terminal and i'm going to use the image as alpine so hyphen hyphen image is equal to alpine and uh, the name of the pod is uh, maybe the demo and i need a shell sh i'm just requesting for deploy this application as well as i need a shell so i just landed on my shell so now let me request so the web so i'm going to try to communicate hey wget wget hyphen q and quit uh, so after executing the output yes and please ping http try to connect try to communicate to the pod so what is the name of the service so the name of the service is test one so let me try to what do you think is he answering my question yes so he is telling that so i can able to access the default page of my remote pod welcome to nginx this is the default page the meaning of this is he's answering so i can communicate so now let me exit 
so can you get to see the demo part is automatically deleted the reason is hyphen hyphen rm option okay so now i will create one network policy by using which i can restrict the communication and tell hey don't talk with any pod and i need to create the network policy that's where the network policy comes into picture if you want to isolate your application from other parts which are running in your kubernetes cluster now let me go and vim demo hyphen netpol dot yaml i'm just using vim editor i'm just writing the yaml so here i'm just write, writing the kind is the network policy and the api version is networking dot kts dot io slash v1 the v1 version and the metadata and the name of the network policy is so maybe i can give a uh, deny so deny all so deny or 100 percent isolation or uh, deny hyphen 100 percent okay deny all maybe let me go with this okay so here this is just a name of the network policy and in this spec i'm telling that the parts to which parts i need to implement this network policy so in that scenario i'm telling that in the cluster i have some parts having a label app is equal to web if you remember we have deployed our application with the label app is equal to web so i'm telling that there are some parts having a label app is equal to web for him i'm creating this network policy and what is the network policy the network policy is i just want the square bracket indicates you so to deny I don't want to allow any traffic any ingress traffic to my application so this is what we saw here so let me share mm, yes so this is what here so here i'm telling that the app is equal to web so i don't want any incoming traffic to my application so this is what here i'm telling that so default denying rest or we had just added the name deny all and we just uh, removed the namespace by default it going to refer it think that the namespace is default if you don't specify anything and the part selector in the part selector i'm giving the labels i'm not using in kubernetes we won't rely on names we won't rely on the ip address we just prefer to go with the labels and to which type of traffic the ingress okay so now so the ingress traffic i just want to deny now escape colon wq exclamation now let me create this policy hey kubectl apply hyphen f demo hyphen netpool.yaml yes the network policy is created now if you go and search hey kubectl netpool you can request network policy and the short name is netpool Hey, cube city will get net pole. Yes, the name of the network policy is deny all. What is the part selector they are using? So to the parts having a label app is equal to web. Now let me create the same part. Okay, hey cube city will run the demo part for just testing purpose. Yes, so now if I go and execute the same command wget test one service, let's see what will happen. So now, is he allowing any traffic to access his default page? No, because we have created a network policy. So where we are telling that I don't want to allow any ingress traffic which is coming to my application and zero, 100% isolation. So in that scenario, you can go with deny all where the in the YAML, you need to add ingress and the square bracket, which will tell the which will create the network policy which will deny 100 percent of traffic to your application in the same way you can uh, limit your traffic for a particular application with uh, the parts having a label like that don't allow any traffic you can whitelist so the parts from 
particular namespace you can whitelist some parts with are having a label you can white you can whitelist the parts having an ip address rather than complete you can tell so if the traffic is coming from this ip address if the traffic is coming from this namespace having a label this so if the traffic is coming from this part having a label so like that you can allow you can deny you can implement a mixture of maybe the policies to ensure a good governance at your application level rather than allowing everyone to access your application data so so that's where the network policy is very very good concepts which will help you a lot to implement the concept of network policies where you can uh, achieve a good governance at your application level to uh, from which pod maybe or from which pod you want to allow uh, any traffic to your application from which port you want to deny the application uh, the traffic from the application from which ip address from which port okay let me show you the another example where we can control the stuff at the port level as well you want to allow a traffic from one particular port only so in that scenario so now let me exit so here you got you cannot connect to remote host no so now let me exit delete it so now let me kubectl get net pool let me delete this network policy mm -hmm. yes a kubectl delete net pool and deny all Yes, I deleted. Now let me delete the kubectl delete uh, all hyphen hyphen all, which will delete my parts and as well as services. Fine. So now let me deploy. And here we are going to learn how to allow a traffic only to a port of an application at particular port. I just want to allow a traffic on particular port. If the traffic is arriving from this particular port, then only I just want to allow the traffic. Otherwise, I just want to deny. So in that scenario, how to achieve that? So let me deploy one application. So kubectl run. So you can think of maybe I'm just giving a name as API server. I'm just using image and the label is app is equal to API server. Fine. So I'm just deploying one application and then I'm just creating deploying one service and I'm exposing uh, I'm adding that application. So it automatically listens on the port 8000. So I'm just creating a service by using two ports kubectl create service uh, the name the type is cluster IP and the name of the service is API server and I'm just giving hyphen hyphen TCP the port and target port the port information and the target port okay i'm just creating a service and then so i need to create a service uh, the network policy where i need to tell i just want to allow it traffic from the port or uh, maybe the port is arriving from 5000 so let me show you vim netpool dot yaml so here the kind is network policy and the api version is uh, the networking dot is dot io and the name is just i just want to allow the traffic coming arriving from the 5000 port and to which part this should apply the part having a label app is equal to api server so this is the label what we have attached to our application as well and the ingress traffic the port coming from only allow the traffic coming from the 5000 and so you can here i'm adding that the part selector as well so it should match the label it should having the label role is equal to monitoring the part having a label role is equal to monitoring then only it need to allow the traffic for that application fine so wq exclamation let me create this network policy it is very good example so hey give serial apply hyphen up netpool.yaml so yes the network policy is created now if i request hey cube ctl get net pole yeah so here the port selector is api i just want to allow the 5000 port fine so how to verify that so let me create the same the random part okay so not this not this not this yeah 
So it's kubectl run hyphen hyphen rm, the name of the part, interactive terminal, the image is alpine, the name of this demo. I'm going inside and now let me do the wget. So hey wget hyphen q capital O hyphen and uh, I'm telling that the timeout should be two seconds. So just ping for two seconds and to whom HTTP colon slash. So what is the service? The service is uh, the service is yes, the name of the service is API server. Okay, colon eight thousand one. Yes, HTTP. There is a typo. Yes. Duplicate download timeout. No, at least five thousand. Five thousand one. So which will route the traffic to 5000 so slash metrics There is the application is which will show the metrics at the port 5000. I just want to know So what is the reason behind that? What I'm missing? Why he not allowing uh, to the 5000 port? Mm, the reason is we are missing we told while creating the network policy We told that the part need to have the label role is equal to monitoring So we forgot to add the label. So that's why let me exit from this pod and create a new pod. So kubectl run here. I need to attach the label as mm, hyphen L or hyphen hyphen labels is equal to in double code. I need to tell role is equal to monitoring the pod need to have this role is equal to monitoring. Now let me hit enter. I'm just going inside. And now let's see what will happen. So first, let me copy this again. Same 8000. Mm -hmm. Again, this. Can you get to see? Easy answering, easy allowing. Yes. So this is the HTTP request on 8000 port. No, on 5000 port, I can able to access my application. So that's where the network policy is very, very good concept. So like that. So this is one of the uh, very important concept in Kubernetes. You need to know how to manually or how to create the network policies to ensure the good governance at your application level. So like that you can configure, you can whitelist ingress, or you can whitelist the egress traffic from particular port, from particular label and uh, you can whitelist. So uh, at the different, different levels, uh, IP address, the namespace, the application labels, yes, and at the port level as well. And then so as uh, we discussed so in kubernetes if you want to learn this kubernetes and you need to know some of the very important concepts like so we have in kubernetes we have different different tools uh, if you want to work with the kubernetes we have a lot of tools uh, maybe you can uh, i can show you the maybe the table the periodic table for tools itself so i just saw this maybe the very good picture where we are going to use maybe a lot of tools for our application in kubernetes so here the h for he uh, the helm l for linker d so m for the mini cube the cube word the calico the cube scan the thanos ah oh, a lot of tools regarding the kubernetes where these tools will help you a lot to configuring your application to manage your application in easy way so we have hundreds of tools which will help you to make your job easy to ensure maybe you achieve the CICD continuous integration the continuous deployment by using the tools like Argo CD tools like the tecton yes from the CNCF and uh, if you want to configure very good network policy uh, you can go with calico you can go with wavenet you can go with the cilium and 
if you want to automate your build process you can go with uh, new technologies like build packs uh, you can automate your building process by using a tool a kubernetes package manager called helm and uh, uh, if you want to configure your certificates all the stuff we have a tool called cert manager and uh, like that you can think of i am showing you the whole periodic table uh, where you can see lot of tools which are related to these are the different different tools which will help you uh, configuring uh, maybe your application in dynamic way yes we have prometheus which will help you in monitoring the fluent which will help you in logging architecture like that uh, if you want to uh, uh, if you want to control the flow of traffic to your cluster if you want to uh, control the traffic so if you want to uh, configure the meshing to your application so that's where we have some tools like the sto the linkerd the envy a lot of tools which will help you a lot for your application for configuring so different different tools so yes so this is maybe if you attain the courses from the cncf we are going to enjoy a lot so we you are going to explore a lot of tools which are related to the kubernetes and the concept of kubernetes this is just a glimpse of uh, maybe what you get from the uh, maybe the spring people if you take a uh, courses from the spring people so yes you will enjoy and we have designed all courses in 70s to 30 role where we are going to have 70% of hands on where you will enjoy the course yeah so let me uh, yes yes abhishek over to you thank you mr mudasir Yep. for your invaluable insights on technology mm -hmm. i'm sure it was certainly a very informative session for all of you if you guys are interested in learning more about various uh, kubernetes things do check out our super discounted batches of virtual instructor led trainings on our website springpeople.com these vilt trainings are leveraged online from the comforts of your home and flexible as per your schedule and location if you do not find any suitable batches we would be happy to discuss and schedule private batches for you if you do not have time to join live online then do try out our affordable self paced courses for more information do write to us at training at the springpeople.com or call on our number displayed on the current slide now we will open the forum to answer questions that we have received during the session so let's get our questions answered over to you mr mudasir yeah anyone any doubts any questions please feel free to ask so how do back up the whole kubernetes kts cluster isha so in kubernetes if you want to take a backup of kubernetes cluster then you prefer you need to uh, take a backup of your etcd you can go with etcd cli or you can integrate some kubernetes operator which will help you a lot maybe if you configure the kubernetes operator automatically take the kubernetes backup so if you go to operator hub.io there you will get this operator just install this kubernetes operator and configure your s3 bucket or any remote storage automatically it will help you to take a backup of your kubernetes cluster yes anyone else uh i'm just taking questions uh -huh. So is there any temporary EK storage which provides fast read write operation? So I'm just taking some questions. Yeah. Just a minute. I'm just yes, questions. If the CADR and accept IP consisting of same IP, then which one will be given the so you need to add so which cadr you do, you don't want to deny maybe you can control at the the different classes of your ip address so what do what to do in this case if you want to deny every traffic anywhere in the world from outside 
Okay, so just a minute. Outside of our application, let's say open fast, but if should be accessible from inside in the cluster, that's maybe you can create just cluster IP for that application if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to allow any traffic from the external world. So it, it is better to learn managed or not managed. So kind of a scenario. Uh, so manages managed services is nothing but a fast food. So uh, so the not managed maybe on premises is kind of a you are going to cook everything. So there, if you are learning, I prefer maybe you need to learn maybe not managed service. So on premises, how to uh, work with on premises. So once you know everything, maybe you can manage your application on the maybe the uh, hosted solutions like AKS, EKS. Yes. Otherwise, they will take care of cluster all the Kubernetes concepts, but uh, there you will uh, take care of your application by using some minimal concepts of Kubernetes. Uh, yes. Could you share the LinkedIn profile? Okay, maybe you need to contact to the Spring people. There you will get yes. Yes. Uh, anyone else? Yes, you will get a recording. You will get or uh, maybe the YouTube video as well. Am I right, Abhishek? Yes, you are. Yeah. Rancher and QBDM things also will be thought. Yes, if you want, we can uh, customize uh, our maybe the training based upon your requirement. Ready? Yes. Okay, so. Mm. In network policy, when using multiple selector like ports, port selector, if a communication said it's only one, so no, maybe you need to apply first default, then you need to create different different network policies. Then maybe you 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 will uh, implement a good network policy. Anyone else? Ah, uh, so. So I'm not getting it's better to learn manage. Yeah, fine. I'm a missing just I'm completely new to Kubernetes and a new program in the company is going to work. Okay, the Kubernetes basic session which you have taken it before. Ah, oh, maybe you will get if you contact to the the Spring People training at springpeople.com. Somebody ask. I think so while creating the API server uh, There were two ports you configured. Yes. I Just created a network policy to allow the traffic from 500 uh, 5000 so that's why it allow when I try to hit the 5000 it will out for 8000 it will deny it Yes, you can control that stuff uh, Is there any temporary EK storage which provide fast read and write operation? Tried using FSNS, but the time to store accessing file is more. You can go with MTDIR type of uh, maybe the storage which will be there in your part itself rather than remotely. If you want, maybe maybe the fast storage. I think I have answered maybe. Um, Lot of questions. Uh, anyone else? Maybe. Yes, external name is uh, maybe other type of service which will help you to communicate or uh, maybe the application on different, uh, maybe the namespace. The service mesh is its different concept. Yes. Yes, you can. Maybe you can write your questions uh, maybe to your, maybe the Spring people as well. Maybe we will reply to your questions. Nothing to worry on that. Those who are not getting a chance or can't able to write. Uh, nothing to worry. So if you just write your question to your maybe the spring people email training at maybe we will answer and maybe if you have anything, maybe please contact to spring people. Yeah. Yes, over to you Abhishek. Thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. We shall be sending out the webinar recording to all of you participants soon. 
I request you to kindly provide feedback before signing off, which will help us improve the quality of our future events. Thanks again for joining us today. Signing thank off you. on behalf of Christ's principle. Hope to yep. see you again for our next expert webinar. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much.